This has been my go-to eye look for almost the entire month of October and I'd love to show you how I did it, so keep watching. So I've already primed my eyes with Urban Decay, what's it called? Primer Potion in Eden. Eden. Look, look what's happening to my bottle. What's up with that? I mean, I know it's an old bottle, but okay, it's what happens when you get makeup at Nordstrom Rack. Anyway, so I've already primed my eyes with that and then we're going to jump right in. And the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a base, I guess. Um, this is the Maybelline Color Tattoo uh, by iStudio in Barely Beige. If you can't find this, it was limited edition, which makes me crazy. Uh, Max Paint Pot and Bare Study Works. Uh, there are any kind of light, shimmery, creamy shadow. This actually isn't a necessary step. This in my head, I feel like it uh, makes my uh, shadow on my lid kind of stand out and be a little more shimmery, but that could probably be all in my head and this is completely unnecessary. The focus of this look is this very odd colored eyeshadow and it's uh, right here and it's, I know the lighting isn't ideal in my bathroom, but actually this is exactly what it looks like and this is the Chanel eyeshadow in Heather Rose. It has a funny story. Um, originally, Lisa, Lisa D1 bought this, or acquired it, I don't even know how she got her hands on it exactly, but she had it first, and then she couldn't figure out what to do with it, just didn't work for her, so she sent it to Emily Clark. Emily Clark had it and also didn't know what to do with it, it's a very odd shadow, and so she sent it to me. So I am the third proud owner of this thing, and I was determined to figure out a way to make this work. and. For me, I feel like, so I really prefer a warm toned eyeshadow, but um, there are some really pretty, more neutral, cool tone shades that I like to wear as well. Um, I have found that if you lay this color in your crease first, and then add your shadows you know, on top of and around it, it warms up the whole look, kind of ties everything together, and well, you'll see. I mean, that's just how I feel. Now, I have been looking high and low for a dupe for this thing, it's a weird color. The closest I found actually was the mauve color in the Pro the Lorac Pro palette, um, which I'm going to pull out for you. It is that one there. Close. Close, but not quite. Um, you can't even get this anymore. I think I, I, I haven't found it online anywhere. But we all have found, I know I have a palette somewhere that has like, has stuck in some kind of reddish brown pink color that nobody knows what to do with. Try using it in your crease. So here we go. I'll show you what I mean. So I am taking, um, I think it's an E40. I have the old numbering system. So I'll put a link to all the brushes that I've, and this is my go-to look. I've been using these brushes and these two eyeshadow things all month and I've been really enjoying it. So Sigma E40 or whatever they're calling the blending, the bigger blending brush. Dip that in and then going straight across. Obviously concentrating the color out here but bringing it all the way actually. And I'm not pulling down and I'm just almost making a straight line. I'm basically not so much following the crease as following the socket which is that bone, the orbital bone where your eyeball floats inside. Wrigley has found a joy for toilet paper, so you are listening to actually both Westies chew and shred tiniest bit of toilet paper. If you hear munching, that's what... They don't really eat it, they just shred it and spit it out. It's disgusting. Um, anyway, so just... And I like to hold the brush kind of towards the far end so that's the not as much pressure. If you find that you're heavy handed when applying your eyeshadows, try that. The closer you hold it to the actual brush head, the more pressure you're putting on the brush and the more pigment you're smacking down on your eye. So that's it. And actually that by itself isn't awful. Next, I'm whipping out my Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells palette. This is by far the best purchase I've ever made in um, the makeup world. It's so cheap, it's so easy, and when I'm in a rush and I don't know what to do for my eyes, no matter what the situation, this is the palette I grab. 
So I'm going to start with the eyelid color, which is um, kind of a pinky, champagne-y color, but it has definitely pink undertones. Uh, and I am using, I don't know the numbers, but it's their flat shader brush. It's also by Sigma. And I will put all those, like I said, in the description box. And I'm just patting this all over the lid and up to the crease. And I'm not being particularly careful. Now, for those of you that are Chanel junkies um, and you have it, the Chanel Illusion Dom uh, in Emmerve is almost the exact same color as this and it looks really good when the two of them are laid together. But I thought if I use two Chanel products, that would be um, a little much. And this is honestly, this is to be true, this is what I do. Uh, once in a while I'll pull out the, Ch the Chanel cream shadow just to use it, but um, I really, really enjoy these Maybelline um, cream shadows quite a bit. Okay, so that's that. Then I take the um, blending brush, E25. You can see I've been using this color a lot this week, and I just go for the crease. I'm just following the directions, basically. Now, I do it on the tip, and I do it on the side because what I've been doing is laying the flat part of the brush. This is why I love this brush. It's so useful. Laying the flat side of the brush on the outer third of my eye and patting down like so. And then taking the tip and putting it in the crease. And about midway. And then I do the same on the other eye. Lay it flat first. Get some color on there. Go like so. It's not a really dark color. It just adds a little dimension to the eye. Then I take my favorite Walmart two-sided brush, the big blender side here. And before I put any color on top, I blend out. Fingers are good too. <laughs> Then um, you can go two ways. If you want a little shimmer, you can use this for your brow bone highlight. If you don't, um, my backup is the Wet n Wild Brulee. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm just going to stick with the palette today. You can always put matte on top if you feel like it's too shimmery. I just use the same thing and I put it up here. And like so. And then if you want an extra punch, take your, um, your flat shader brush. Dip it into the brow bone color and then just literally dot it in there and dot it in there in your inner corner. That's it. That's the eyeshadow done. Um, all that's left to do is I take my um, brown eyeliner, line my eyelash, eyelashes, I line my upper, my lid. Um, I don't do any wing or cat eye or anything curl and um, good to go. So I'll be right back once I've put all that on. Hang on. So that's the finished look. I feel like this is appropriate for just about any setting you can think of. Day to night, work, casual, what have you. And you can always go heavier on the eyeliner or deeper in the crease with a color, but it's just, I think it's a very flattering look for most people. I hope you like it. If you can think of any dupes for this very odd color, um, I looked all over Mac's website. Cranberry is similar, but it's a satin and um, it's a little darker than this, but somebody's got to make a dupe for this somewhere. I couldn't find one, but I'd love you. You all are the smartest group of people on, on the internet. I know you're going to come up with a dupe for this color. So I look forward to seeing what you suggest and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.